Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 118 of ASP.NET video series. In this video, we'll discuss about the differences between user controls and custom controls. In parts 104 to 109 of the ASP.NET video tutorial, we discussed about user controls. And in parts 112 to 117, we discussed about custom controls. In this video, we'll discuss about the differences between them. In fact, this is a very common interview question as well. One of the differences between them is that custom controls are compiled into their own assembly, whereas user controls are not. User controls are compiled into the assembly of the web application project that contains them. Let's understand that with an example. Let's flip to this custom controls project that we have been working with. If you remember, within this custom controls project, we have this custom calendar control. Now, this custom calendar control, since it is present in custom controls project, when I compile this solution, we get an assembly generated for this custom controls project. So if I open that in Windows Explorer, let's go to the bin debug directory, I can see this custom controls .dll. Now into this assembly, we will have this uh, custom calendar control compiled. Okay, so on the other hand, if you look at the ASP.NET Web Application Project here, we have been working with this calendar user control. Now, if I compile this ASP.NET Web Application Project, this calendar user control will be compiled into the Web Application Project's assembly. Now, it's not possible to compile user controls into their own assemblies. The fact that custom controls can be compiled into their own assemblies allows custom controls to be added to Visual Studio Toolbox. In fact, that's the second difference between custom controls and user controls. Custom controls can be added to the Visual Studio Toolbox, whereas user controls cannot be added. And if you remember, we actually have added this custom calendar control to this Visual Studio Toolbox. We also have associated a custom image with that control. Now, can we add user controls to Visual Studio Toolbox? No, we cannot do that. And if I have to use a custom control on a web form, I simply drag and drop it from the toolbox onto the web form, just like any other built-in ASP.NET control. But if I have to use a user control, I drag it from the Solution Explorer onto the web form, not from the toolbox. Okay, So that could be another difference. Another thing to keep in mind is that user controls are easier to create as they are very similar to creating web pages. Now, if you look at the calendar user control that we have worked with in the previous sessions of this video series, it has got this ASCX page. And then if I open up that, you know, it's just like a web form. It has this HTML. And this user controls also have a code behind file just like our web forms. Okay, and another important thing to keep in mind is that this user controls have a designer associated with them. So if I have to create the UI for my calendar user control, I, I simply drag and drop those controls that I need from the toolbox at design time declaratively because I have a designer, a graphical designer. But if I have to do the same thing with uh, a custom control, then it's a relatively complex job because with co custom controls, I don't have a designer associated. I have to do everything in code. In, fa in fact, we worked with this custom calendar, so obviously there also we require the text box image button calendar. Look at this. Since I don't have a designer, I have to do everything from declaration to rendering within code. So here I'm declaring, declaring these controls first, and then within ch create child controls method, we specify the ID, width, and any other properties that we are interested in. And finally, using the render method, we actually render the controls. So everything done in code. But on the other hand, with user controls, since we have a designer, we can declaratively specify the controls and properties like ID, run net, image, URL, etc. Everything declaratively at design time. Okay, so since the custom controls doesn't have a designer associated with them, this fact makes makes them a little complex to work with custom controls than user controls. And another difference is that a separate copy of user control is required in each application where you want to use that user control. So if you look at this now, the ASP.NET Web Application Project here, we have this calendar user control that's present in this project. Now let's say I have another 
10 ASP.NET web application projects where I want to use this calendar user control. In that case, I have to have a copy of this calendar user control in each of those 10 different ASP.NET web application projects where I want to use this control. So what's the problem of having uh, multiple copies? Maintainability. So tomorrow, if for some reason the calendar user control has to change, I have to make that change in all of those 10 different applications where we are using that control. So maintainability becomes a little problematic with these user controls. But whereas with custom controls, I don't have that problem. I can reuse uh, a custom control uh, with multiple projects without having multiple copies. Okay, so those are some of the differences. But however, when working with custom controls, there are some points that have to be kept in mind, which is what we will discuss now. So, when we drag and drop a custom control from the toolbox onto the web form designer, then the following two things can happen. Okay, let's actually look at that in action. So, I have this custom calendar control that's available, uh, you know, in the Visual Studio toolbox. Let's say I want to use that. In this web on this web form 9.aspx in this um, you know demo asp.net web application project now look at the references I don't have a reference to custom uh, controls project but the moment I drag and drop this onto the web form look at this a reference to that assembly is automatically added custom controls assembly okay and now let me go ahead and uh, build a solution and look at the properties of this assembly so I am right click on that custom right clicking on that custom controls and then clicking properties copy local property is set to true meaning this assembly will be copied locally into this ASP.NET web application project and why is that because at the moment custom controls project so if you look at this custom controls project within that we have this custom calendar and obviously when we compile this as you might expect we have an assembly generated now since this custom controls assembly is not a strongly named assembly I cannot install this assembly into the GAC into the global assembly cache okay so if I don't have this assembly this custom controls assembly in the GAC and if I add a reference to that assembly in the ASP.NET Web Application Project, then a copy of that assembly will be made into the bin directory of my ASP.NET Web Application Project. So that's one thing that can happen. So if the custom control assembly is not installed in GAC, then custom control assembly is copied into the bin folder of the application. So in this case, if you need to use this custom control in multiple applications then a copy of the custom controls assembly will be made into the bin folder of every application where you are using or referencing that custom control so if you check this ASP.NET web application project if I right click that if I open that in Windows Explorer get to the bin directory look at that custom controls DLL uh, that specific assembly is added as a reference to this project now on the other hand if the custom controls assembly is installed in GAC. Now, we spoke about what is GAC and how to strongly name an assembly and then add that assembly into GAC in the previous sessions of the you know, .NET Basics video tutorial. In fact, in part three of the .NET Basics video tutorial, we discussed about strong naming an assembly. And in part four, we discussed about what is GAC and how and when to install an assembly into GAC. So if you're new to these concepts, I strongly recommend to watch you know, parts three and four from the .NET Basics video tutorial. But Remember, if the custom control assembly is installed in GAC, then the custom control assembly is directly referenced from the GAC. So in this case, a single copy of the custom control can be used in multiple projects. So let's actually look at that in action. Now look at this. Here, you know, in the bin folder of our ASP.NET web application project, let's actually get to the bin folder of the ASP.NET web application project. So I right click on the project go to open folder in Windows Explorer bin look at that a copy is made okay why because the custom controls uh, assembly is not strongly named so to strongly name and I mean it's not installed into GAC uh, so obviously to install an assembly into GAC we need to first strongly name the assembly and to strongly namely as uh, to name an assembly we need to use the strong naming tool so let's go to start all programs Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 and Visual Studio Tools and within that I have Visual Studio Command Prompt 
right click on that run as administrator and we have to run you know the strong naming tool from there so cd backslash let me change the directory to sweet drive and i have to use the strong name tool strong name dot exe hyphen k to generate the key file and i'm going to specify the name of my file as key file dot snk and i press enter the tool should write a key file that contains the private and public key into my C drive. So obviously now if we go to the C drive, there we should see the key file. So key file dot SNK. Okay, now using this key file, we want to strongly name our custom controls assembly. And to do that, we get into the properties folder and then assembly info.cs. Here within this assembly info.cs, we need to specify an assembly level attribute so assembly colon assembly key file attribute and then let's use the verbatim literal to specify the path of the key file so the key file is present in C drive backslash and the name of the file is key file dot SNK so let's go ahead and build the solution now so now at this point since we have a key file associated and a ver assembly version number as well when we build this project, a strong name will be generated for us for our assembly. Now, once we have a strong name generated, we can actually install this assembly into the GAG. So if I open this folder in Windows Explorer, go to the bin debug. So this is our custom controls assembly. I want to install this into the GAG. So to get to the GAG, I can open C colon backslash Windows. And as I told you, we discussed about what is GAG. How, uh, and when to how and when to install an assembly into GAC. We discussed about all these concepts in the .NET Basics tutorial. So please watch those videos if you're new to these concepts. So let's get to C colon Windows Microsoft .NET assembly folder where we have all the you know assemblies. So we have all the assemblies here. Now at the moment you don't see custom controls um, you know folder here, which means custom controls assembly is not yet present in the GAC. And to install an assembly into GAC, there are several ways. I'm going to use the GAC utility tool. So GAC utility, so GAC util.exe hyphen I to install the assembly into the GAC. And then we need to specify the assembly path, you know, which we want to install into the GAC. So the assembly is present at this path. C colon custom controls bin debug. So that's the path. Let's copy that, paste it here and backslash let's specify the name of the assembly which is custom controls .dll. let's paste that there and then when I press enter look at that assembly successfully added to the cache now if we go back to the GAC MSIL and refresh this we should actually see custom controls folder there and then if I expand that look at that I have custom controls .dll, which is added to the GAC okay now let's go back to Visual Studio and before I remove this uh, you know this custom calendar let me actually right click and select choose items and then within the choose items dialog box let me show you custom calendar here so if you notice custom calendar here this is actually coming from C drive custom calendar custom calendar bin folder so this is not coming from the GAC but whereas, look at this, the other assemblies like system.web.ui.webcontrols, where is that coming from? That is coming from global assembly cache, the GAC. Okay? Now, since I have installed our custom calendar control into GAC, I want, I want that to be you know, coming from GAC rather than uh, you know, from that local path, which is uh, you know, not a strongly named assembly. So I'm going to delete that from here and then re-add the custom calendar control. But then before that, let's remove this control as well. And then let's also remove this reference. And let's actually go to the bin directory and re delete it from there. Actually, let's delete everything. Okay, so we have all that gone. I'm gonna close all these folders. Let's go back to Visual Studio. Let's make sure everything still builds. So build succeeded. Now let's add the uh, custom control. So choose items. So where is our um, you know, strongly named assembly present? It's present in the GAC now. So I'm going to go to the path of GAC, which is present in C colon backslash windows. 
backslash microsoft.net backslash assembly and within that GAC MSIL and we have custom controls and the assembly. So the moment I added that control, look at that custom calendar and look at the directory from where it's coming now. It's coming from global assembly cache. So I click OK, the calendar gets added. Now before we do anything, let me open uh, you know the web application projects bin folder. So within the bin folder at the moment I only have demo.dll and then look at this. I'm going to drag and drop the custom calendar control onto this web form. Okay. As soon as I do that, now look at this. In the references I have custom controls assembly added because that's where the custom calendar control is present. Now if I click on properties and select the properties, look at from where it is coming. It's coming from GAC. And then look at this copy local attribute. Is that set to true or false? It's set to false because if the assembly is coming from the GAC, there is no need for that to be copied locally into the bin folder of this ASP.NET web application. So obviously now, when I build the solution and when I go into the bin folder of the project, I should only see demo.dll. I don't see custom uh, controls.dll because that is now coming from GAC. Now it's very similar to how, let's say for example, I drag and drop the standard text box control here or a button control, whatever. This is the standard button control which is present in system.webassembly. Okay, now if I right click on system.webassembly and go to the properties, even this is coming from GAC. Okay, so system.webassembly is coming from the GAC and then, uh, so obviously for that reason, if I go to the folder and bin directory, I don't have here system.webassembly locally copied. So just how the standard ASP.NET assemblies are working, our custom calendar, I mean custom controls assembly is also working in the same manner because we have it deployed to the GAC. Okay, so I can run this application and it works. So keep that in mind. If the custom controls assembly is installed in GAC, then custom controls assembly is directly referenced from the GAC. So in this case, a single copy of the custom control can be used in multiple projects. All right. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.